Thanks, Brett. So Anna and I are here today. And um, wanting to talk about new perspectives in healing. And um, I, I, I debated a long time whether you use slides or not, because I really like to see my audience when I talk, but um, I just couldn't do it without slides. So I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my slides on board, if that's OK, Anna. We're happy that you're doing that, actually. So thank you. OK. So. See if I can figure out how to get my screen up. Can you see it, Anna? OK. So um, I wanted to find a new path to wellness. And I just wanted to start off with, I once believed that diseases were caused by pathogens. Um, that you could prove that this bug caused this disease. And now I believe that we cultivate good health with, with good habits. I once believed that I could eat to soothe my feelings. And now I believe I can eat just the right amount of food to nourish my body and minimize my symptoms. I once believed I was too sick to travel. And as I have healed myself, I got to um, go canoeing in the Boundary Waters, uh, spend a month in Cambodia, spend a month in Dominican Republic visiting my friend. And the, the idea for this talk came from when a neighbor came over to visit. And he's a soil ecologist. And my other neighbor has an organic garden that he sells vegetables commercially. And Bob started off telling the organic farmer how to amend the soil, get the pH right, and he added microorganisms to the soil, and he got the energy flowing and the water flowing optimally. And those vegetables, I mean, the kale was three feet tall. When we ride our bikes by the garden, we just have never seen that, such a healthy garden. And then we noticed the garden wasn't looking so great. So I asked my friend, what, what happened to Jack's garden? And she said that the, the care had been transferred to a university entomologist, a plant doctor who identified and treated diseases. And um, he named the viruses and the bacteria and the parasites that were in the plants. And he gave specific organic treatments or remedies. And then more pathogens popped up and more pathogens popped up, and more pathogens popped up. After about seven years, my friend was visiting there just socially. And he said, well, what happened to the garden? And he said, well, it seems like the soil's getting uh, worn out. And Bob said, well, do you mind if I take a look at it? And all the remedies that he had done had been undone by the treatments that were put on by the soil pathologist who unwittingly killed the good bacteria in the soil and have changed the pH. So <coughs> Bob made amendments to the soil and now the, the within three months, the garden was again thriving like with plants you've never seen before. And I thought, well, can we use that to make our own internal gardens um, thrive? So it's kind of looking at the disease model versus is the wellness model. The disease model says an infection happens, strong drugs are needed to kill invaders and restore health. And the wellness model says the person has the ability to shift their resilience with good nutrition, adequate sleep, optimal hydration, detoxification support, both emotional and physical, meditation, loving kindness to self and others, and connection to higher power and their loved ones. And I'm not saying one is true and the other isn't. Like when you cut an apple one way, it's a star, and the other way, it's, it's moon. They could both be true to some degree. Um, I remember when I was very sick, 
people said, oh, you just need to do this mind body thing and you'll be better. And I was like, you're crazy because antibiotics makes me better. And um, that's how it felt at that time. But after I've taken uh, so many antibiotics and intravenous vitamin C and silver and supplements, I, I, I just know that naming another pathology and trying to kill that one pathology is not going to make me as a, as a human being feel better. I'm saying that each of us can widen the path to better health and decrease our suffering with lifestyle changes. So as Britt said, I have had um, big exposure to mold, which activated Lyme, Babesi, Bartonella, and COVID all at the same time. And I had severe chest pain and shortness of breath and heart enlargement. It was a diagnosis as autoimmune myocarditis, but no physician really knew what to do at that time. In my meditation, I received the, the idea that my immune system couldn't tell the muscles in my heart from an invading bacteria. And so contemplating the mind-body connection, I knew my heart was broken. I had very little self-compassion. I was so hard on myself. I was yelling at myself all the time to do more and to find a way to be worthy of love. I was barely giving myself any rest or good nutrition or fun at work. I maybe had five minutes for lunch and I was there until eight o'clock at night and all weekends I was spending studying. So I, I needed to find a way to, to heal my life. My body was rebelling against the stress of being driven so hard. No wonder my immune system was searching for a way to put on the brakes on my heart. How could I teach my immune system to stand down to identify my heart and all my cells as myself? I knew I needed some help. And uh, this wasn't the first time that uh, boundary issues became a problem because I see cancer as also a problem with boundaries. Um, colon cancer, breast cancer, a thyroid disease, and severe adverse childhood events where sacred boundaries were crossed and my feelings were hurt and my trust was broken in people that I was supposed to depend on. I had gluten intolerance, many allergies, chronic low white blood cells and chronic fatigue, 19 different episodes of tick bite and rash, and clinical and lab evidence of Borrelia, Babesia and Bartonella. I had Lyme, arthritis, neuritis and carditis that responded to antibiotics. And when I would take say a shot of penicillin, my heart would beat regular for about three weeks and then it would beat irregular again. So I thought, this is serious. I can't live without a heart. I I'm going to do everything I know. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I focused on securing my own boundaries with proper nutrition, sleep, hydration, and supplements. I decided to work on improving my loving relationships, which were not very good when I started. And I didn't even know why. I got guidance from spirit guides and grounded healers um, exploring the new frontiers of healing. And I uh, worked on healing childhood uh, trauma and forgiving for good. Um, I joined Brightline Eating with uh, Susan Pierce Thompson, who um, says there's bright lines on a road. You don't drive down the wrong side of a road. You know, certain things you don't do. Like I don't take crack cocaine. There's, you know, just things I don't do. So the bright lines for this are um, avoid eating sugar and flour and all processed foods. Eat two or three meals. I eat two meals a day in weighed and measured portions, nothing in between. So time to start food eating, time to stop eating is clear. Um, it's planned the day before and committed to a buddy and eaten only as planned. And there's, it's supported with twice daily video calls and workshops and support groups. 
but the whole bright line eating concept is more than just what to eat. We also needed support daily. I connect with a buddy or two who just checks in and knows what's going on in my life. Weekly, I connect with a group of four who grow in wisdom and compassion together over time. Uh, twice daily, there's online meetings in which uh, a coach um, helps somebody who's having trouble navigating their lines. And then Susan Pierce Thompson is a brain scientist who always brings a new science forward. And it was, it was huge for me. But communicating with broken parts of myself was, was even harder. For the first two years, um, parts of me would say, oh, we're having a hard time. Why don't you eat off plan? It's, it, it, it's, um, it's too hard to follow this plan. I want to have fun. I want to do this. Like there was all sorts of excuses. And I came to see that these were broken parts of me that were trying to help. Um, but they weren't helping me stay healthy. When I followed, when I followed these broken parts, I, I actually felt more sick and my heart would ache. Um, I realized that communication with myself and others was still harsh and damaging to my heart. I was yelling at myself, really. I sought counseling from an internal family system specialist, um, from a spiritual advisor and from a personal coach. And together we created an environment to heal in myself, like the um, um, garden specialist had created an environment to, to heal my friend's garden. Um, I, I did give you, a, 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 there's some handout resources. Jane Rosen is here today and she'll be back next week to talk about what internal family systems approach is. Um, online, Tori Olds ha has a series of five um, YouTube series about doing parts work. And I just think she's excellent. Um, and then there's a book by Richard Schwartz called No Bad Parts, which I think is interesting, but he worked more with people with serious pathology like um, depression and anxiety, not people that were just trying to follow healthy lifestyles. Uh, my friend Maureen McShane and I took a course uh, from Marie Manucheri on um, multi-sensory perception in which Marie assured us that God or the divine power or universal intelligence is always there for us, which is not, if you grew up Christian, is that, you know, it says in the Bible, knock and it shall be answered, ask and it shall be given. And every religion has some variation of that. Maybe in Native Americans, people go on a fast um, uh, or vision quest. Um, people pray for guidance. Uh, but basically, um, she said, ask for what you need and look for answers all around you. And it was really shocking how um, answers would show up to whatever it was I was asking. Um, but be willing to realize that something, you might need to do something you don't want to, to heal. So somebody would come on and say, I, I really want to get rid of this eczema. And she says, you know what to do. And she goes, no, I don't. And she goes, you know what to do. You mean give up dairy, they'd say. And she'd go, yeah, uh, you know what to do. You just don't want to do it. And when you're ready, your, your rash will go away. And so um, then they came back, you know, and say it worked. And so that, that was interesting to me. Megan Lemp, uh, many of you know that, um, I consulted with her early on when I was sick uh, because my C-reactive protein was 212. That's a marker of inflammation, normal is less than five. And I'd never seen anything so high. <clears throat> she gave me some gemotherapy that got that down to 1.48 in about four days. And then started me on a series of gemos to reduce inflammation and calm my mind. And I thought the reduced inflammation was the big part, but really it was um, calming my mind that was uh, huge. We met every six to eight weeks until I was stable. 
And then I just went down to St. Louis where she is and she did a series of intensive daily acupuncture moxibustion to clear trauma clinging to the sinews, which resolved exercise fatigue. That is the fatigue I would get if I would do more than my body was capable of. Of course, you don't know what your body's capable of. You push yourself and then I would collapse for a series of days. And that has resolved since I did that series of acupuncture moxibustion with Megan, I can run or bike up hills and my exercise tolerance has increased quite a bit. Although I'm not entering a marathon anytime soon. Um, when I was studying gemotherapy, I met Isabel Frankel who did um, something called human detox therapy, which is on the theory that medical treatments like drugs and vaccines, as well as viruses and bacteria can get stuck in the tissues, um, opening a pathway to recurrent uh, infections or hormone imbalance and slowly ascending or increasing doses, which in homeopathy, if you know anything about it, it's really more dilute, the, 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 the higher the number, the more dilute can neutralize reactions and alleviate symptoms. And I'll, I'll tell you a couple of those stories. Um, one of them was, uh, I was camping in the Bighorn Mountains and I woke up in the middle of the night with left kidney pain and fevers, chills and sweats and found out I had blood in my urine. And I thought this is a kidney infection and kidney infections can kill elderly people, which I was. So as soon as the sun got up, we drove the hour to Buffalo City and got some antibiotics. But Isabel answered my phone call and said, did you just take a homeopathic last night? And I said, yes, I did. And she said, have you ever had these symptoms? I said, well, I had a kidney infection while I was camping last year in the Big Horn Mountains. And she said, well, just take three of those little pellets, put it in a glass glass, stir it with a metal spoon and take a teaspoon every 10, 15 minutes and let me know how it goes. And with the first teaspoon, the kidney pain went away. And the second teaspoon, the fevers, chills and sweats went away. And the third teaspoon, the blood in the urine went away and that was it. Like 30 minutes later, I was cured of a kidney infection, which I could have told you, I believe was caused from a bacteria, but this homeopathic made it go away. And another thing is that um, this December, I started getting something that seemed like seasonal affective disorder. I just was down in a way that I don't really get down like that. I'm not a depressed person. I'm not Eeyore, I'm more of a tigger. I was bouncing around. Um, and I was talking to a friend third week in December. I said, I haven't felt like this since I took birth control pills when I was a freshman in college. And then I thought, oh, I'm taking a homeopathic for oral contraceptives. Maybe that's the thing. I talked with um, Isabel and she said, yeah, put three of them in water, stir them up and take a teaspoon every 10, 15 minutes. And over six doses, that depression just went away. Um, uh, another remedy I'm taking was called estrogen. And um, I was molested when I was uh, just developing breasts and this estrogen brought up those symptoms. And I also was able to neutralize it, but I was able to take the step of resolving those feelings with that person asking for an apology. Not that I got it, but I did my part and I feel like I was able to let go of it for good. And the last symptom was that a remedy called BBB uh, for Borrelia bartonella and Babesia triggered my Lyme carditis symptoms. I, I noticed my heart feeling big and my heart racing and I was in atrial fib. And um, this was 12 hours after I took it. So I wasn't sure it was connected. I thought, well, maybe it's just a, a repeat of symptoms. But sure enough, when I took that diluted, down in the water and took a teaspoon every 10 minutes. Um, the symptoms resolved after three doses. So deep healing is perceived in my body. Um, and I just think it's amazing. 
these homeopathic courses, as they're called, are four to 16 weeks, and they start at a low dose and work their way up. It can be confusing. Um, read every word of the instructions. If you read every word uh, several times and then chart it out on calendar and then let someone know you took your remedy, then I think that can go better, but it can be confusing. So what did I have to do for mind body work? Um, we've often noticed that trauma and Lyme affects the fascia, it becomes stickier and more glued down. Uh, people would say, I have the rusted tin man syndrome. <laughs> you try to move and you just can't, you just kind of feel frozen. Uh, the fascia connects the muscles in the skin and it conducts the flow of information and energy in the body. Um, any kind of movement like yoga, Pilates, everyday stretches will um, allow that energy to start flowing. And Dr. Bruscano used to say people that don't exercise don't get well. Dr. Bruscano taught most of us on how to um, heal ourselves. Sauna actually um, helps that uh, fascia become more fluid and, and promote uh, detoxification. But um, acupuncture and moxibustion softens the fascia and makes it slide more easily and allows our meridians to let uh, information flow through the body. So in mind, body, spirit work, uh, we learn that suffering can be caused from trauma or illness, but it can also be caused from our attachment to um, things being how they were or how we want them. That um, the, the, the trauma or illness causes a certain amount of suffering, but our way of looking at things like when we go into a state of sympathetic dysregulation of, of finding ourselves um, angry or irritable, um, naming, blaming, shaming ourselves or others about it, um, things get worse. Uh, so um, suffering can bring unanticipated wisdom as we learn from this disease and we get more connected to others. Uh, Pema Chodron wrote a book, Loving What Is. And so when we are in a situation with brain fog, numbness, tingling, joints that won't work, we can seek the lesson. And um, we might not always want to do what the lesson says, but we could just see what could we do? What's the next thing we could do to... Um, be more present in this moment and learn the lesson. Um, just a couple of more uh, resources. Keisha Ewers wrote a book on how to reverse autoimmune disorder, which was so helpful to me. It was pivotal. And I, I just learned about this mind body stuff when I was with Bill Manahan at a holistic medicine meeting in 19... 1980, um, but I re didn't really integrate it until Keisha Ewers just said, you have to, like, there's no choice. Your body's attacking itself. You have to learn how to be friendlier to, your to yourself. The autoimmune diet, avoiding beans, grains, sugar, dairy, and nightshades was incredible. I couldn't believe nightshades. Like, when I give up nightshades, all the pain in my body went away that was left. It was shocking i didn't want to give them up but i did and do trauma work to clear the trauma there's lots of ways to do trauma work um breath work acupuncture meditation get support and um i wanted to find somebody local who did acupuncture sort of similar to megan so uh Catherine campbell um is somebody that i found who specializes in clearing trauma with acupuncture she's expert at diagnosis and treatment and uses somatic experience to re restore nervous system resiliency. She'll tell us more about that. And Anna um, is gonna bring us, well, she knows so many things, 
But heart math is, is just a brilliant observation that the amount of time between one heartbeat and the next heartbeat, if you graph it and we're under stress, that graph jig jags and it's jagged and irregular. And when we breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly with attention to the breath, it forms a beautiful sine wave that signals at a cellular level, our DNA to function optimally. This is this is the 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 the, the science and math of um, mind body connection. So, in summary, I used to think that if I was smart enough and I knew everything in the world there was to learn, I could prevent or alleviate suffering to myself and others. But now I know that suffering happens to everybody. And Lyme and mold and co-infections bring unique challenges that cause for new ways of looking for solutions. As Thich Nhat Hanh said, the way out is in. We can widen the pathway to deep and lasting healing with coming back to the present moment, to this breath, to listening and refreshing ourselves with gratitude, with proper nutrition, hydration, sleep, connection to others, and fitness and fun, cornerstones of good health. So there's new pathways revealing themselves with homeopathy that came up in the 1700s and acupuncture that's 3000 years old and more and more is being known. So simple steps are not always easy, like to eat what I should, sounds easy but it's not always easy to do. And getting support is not always easy, but what we're looking for, what, what is the next right thing to do? And then do it and know that the next right thing will appear after that. We don't have to do all the right things at once. So questions. And then how do I stop screen sharing, Anna? There's a green button that says shares. You got it. I think. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Brilliant. Dr. Vakoda, that was powerful. Um, I was brought to tears quite a bit. Uh, it was just so honest. And I think all of us could relate to that and to many parts of it. And if you were to, to look at, you've done a lot. How would you suggest that we even start to look at this? I think like the people that ask Marie Manucheri questions that when you sit in meditation and say, what's my next right step? You know, should I be eating those chips at night? Should I be binge watching this television show? Should I be staying at home when I, I know I need people in my life um, to, 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 to look for the next right step. Like if, I don't know if you paid attention in the news, loneliness is the biggest epidemic in America. And Mother Teresa said America is the poorest of the poor. In India, where they don't have enough food to eat or clothes to wear, they have community. We don't have community here in America. And so people need to reach out. I'm lucky that Bright Light Eating has a formal system. I have two buddies. I have one mastermind group. I have one Gideon Games group, which is like 10 of us across the globe that compete to try to stay on track with our program. So like that is all of that for me. Um, it's, so it's not, I'm it's gonna, not, I'm gonna, it's, <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I'm saying Go that, ahead. that, that for, for me, all of that comes in one package, but for a lot of people, that would be different things. Um, I would love it if some Lyme uh, provider, I know um, Kara Parker does something like these classes where she does support online and in person um, yes. where people, people can like, this week we're talking about nutrition. This week we're talking about detoxification. This week we're talking about mold. That um, that would be a way that people in the Twin Cities anyways could um, gather support and feel connected. 
but this group also has a, a once a month uh, connection <clears throat> group, right, Britt? Yep, the second Tuesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. And we've been on Zoom since COVID started. Um, we have kind of started talking about getting one of those spinning cameras and microphones so we could do a hybrid back in person and um, have the Zoom element as well. So we're kind of at the beginning stages of talking about that. That'd be great because... Um, Three years ago, four years ago, $3 million was donated to solve Lyme disease. And after two and a half years, they came up with a study saying that Lyme, people with Lyme suffer more than people with congestive heart failure. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. I know that we're suffering. I knew that we're in pain. I knew that we don't sleep well. I knew that we hurt to walk. You know, they, they, they need to start with like, what can we do? And just avoiding seed oils, oils made from seeds, like canola and corn oil and all of that is so inflammatory. Anything like that increases your inflammation. So Lyme thrives on inflammation. Lyme cannot reproduce without inflammation. If you eat anything that causes inflammation or don't get enough water, don't get enough sleep, you increase the inflammation in your body so that Lyme thrives. And Maureen was saying to me the other day that she'd have friends refer in and people's symptoms would already be 40% better just with diet changes, just by eating whole foods, just by giving up sugar. And if people don't give up sugar, I didn't see anybody get better that didn't give up sugar. Dr. Ricotta, so if somebody were to like we, I want to use a lot of the things that you were talking about. Do you have a habit stack that you really like to do in a day? Those are a lot of activities. So many of us are busy. Do you have a way that you could say, I looking at body, mind, emotion, and spiritual aspects, which are all part of our well-being, and using that full um, body care? How would you go about taking care of your lifestyle and putting some of that in? I do have a habit stack. That's the word that Susan Pierce Thompson uses. Um, and I included it in the handout to this. I start off at five o'clock with rowing and I started to row for two minutes and now I'm up to 30. But um, this elliptical rower that was developed by the engineer at teeter.com exercises every muscle in your body at the same time without any stress on your joints. So even people with severe arthritis um, uh, benefit from it. And I have many friends that are getting shoulder surgery. I don't need shoulder surgery. I'm like, I'm, I'm muscle bound. My, my stomach is a six pack. I don't like that. And that's because of rowing. So then after I do the rowing, I do uh, meditation. I started off with headspace app or Muji, which are, I also give links to guided meditation. And then eventually I just listen to um, Native American flute music and a timer. And I try to, um, you know, breathe in. I know I'm breathing in, breathing out. I know I'm breathing out. And I try to feel my heartbeat. And um, that's helpful. From there, I do journaling. Uh, it's called morning pages where you write three, three pages. And often by the third page, you're, you're giving yourself wisdom, like wisdom is flowing from the universe into you through your hand. And it's just sort of amazing. And then I do inspirational reading. Um, I like uh, um, Journey to the Heart by Melody Beattie. She's got every day is like some little tiny paragraph that you can read that'll pick you up and um, have you be where you're supposed to be. Then I get on the AM accountability call for a half hour. I call a couple of friends. I go out for some outdoor time, whether it's a walk or a run or skiing. Uh, that's 30 to 60 minutes for me. And then I do yoga, what we call mat yoga. We got a mat from Amazon for 10 bucks and we do the yoga moves that are on the map. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's so many good um, yoga teachers on YouTube that, and I put some references in my handout. 
Um, then I have uh, my uh, bright breakfast at uh, 11.30. I just do things throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, I um, journal what I did um, to be of service to somebody else. And um, I try to get to bed by 8.30 <laughs> because if you're going to get up yeah. at five, it really helps to, um, <laughs> not that I don't ever binge watch stuff, not that I, I, I never do that, but I notice I don't feel as good if I stay up late. Um, nothing good ever happens in my house after 8.30 that's like beneficial to my health. <laughs> and a lot of good things happen between five and seven o'clock. So I... And I've always been a morning person. Like I said, I'm a tigger. So um, <laughs> having Lyme disease and being the rusted tin man was really, really hard on me. Um, but I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like I, yoga changed my life. My husband developed rheumatoid arthritis and he started doing yoga and stopped rheumatoid arthritis in combination with what, yeah, yeah. Like reverse, when he went to see Megan, she did moxibustion on him and those big knuckles they're like 90% back to normal. I've never seen rheumatoid arthritis oh. first, never. Wow. But it was yoga and he's off of nightshades, flour and sugar and- um, Dairy. Dairy, off of dairy. Um, and then we're doing uh, moxibustion on him. And uh, you can get these, these moxibustion in the mail and put them uh, on oh. these areas that are, that are, cold or you know Bartonella you have those places on your long bones that are swollen and and any place that that's dampness swollen, yeah cold. is that like dampness that they right it gets the energy to flow and when mm -hmm. Megan comes on I think she's going to talk about that trauma and infection gets stored in our tissues until someday time in the future when we're ready to process it and so we're all here we might be ready to process it and, um, you know, forgive for good, bad things that have happened to us in the past. I love that. Forgive for good. That's beautiful. Well, I remember um, one of the holistic physicians said, um, shame is the flame that burns everyone it touches. So if there's like people in your life that you say shame on you, how could you have done that to me? How could you have done that? You know, it, 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 it burns everyone it touches. And um, so when I decided to ask forgiveness for the person who had hurt me when I was little, I said, I would like to offer you uh, an opportunity to help me heal my heart. And I know that you're not good at writing. So I actually wrote the apology. And here it is. All you have to say is OK. And no one advance, you'll be forgiven. <laughs> of course, there was no response. Uh, just made sure that he got it and um, no response, but um, I don't need the response. I just need to know that I've offered him my heartfelt uh, forgiveness and now I can move forward. Have you experienced Hapono Opono, the, uh, the Hawaiian forgiveness? Um, I don't know if the, if what it is, so it's, it's a type of work in which it's an energetic in which you say, I, I forgive you. I forgive me. I love you. I can't remember the, the sequence. Do you know of it? I don't know that. I, um, I do the loving kindness where you just say, may I be well, may I be healed. And then to, you know, may I be free of suffering and may you be well and kind of, work your circle all the way out. And I was just listening to a podcast on secular Buddhism. Noah Rochetta is talking about that um, we are less kind to ourselves than we are to anybody. And we're less kind to our family and friends than we are to strangers. And that we think, why, I, 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 I want to just be of service. I don't want to like focus on me. But he said, when you focus on loving yourself first, that like goes exponentially out into the world that if you're kind to yourself, then you'll be kind to your family and friends and you'll be kinder to, to everyone. And that just flows out in ripples. I feel that you really demonstrated that about such self-love and discover into 
how you treated yourself through the years and that exploration of everything that you tried to release these things that were coming up for you to learn from. And a lot of it, it kept coming back to your self-love and forgiveness and being okay with you first, it seems. Well, I certainly didn't start there. Um, you know, when I was practicing medicine, I really felt like I had to earn love. I felt like I had to be smart enough and good enough and hardworking enough. I'd be at work at seven in the morning till eight at night, evenings and weekends I would spend studying. Um, I would, my only vacations were on to conferences. Um, except for one week a year when I was cooking at people camp. So, <laughs> um, no, I wasn't very kind to myself. I was, uh, I drove myself. I had maybe five minutes for lunch. Uh, I often didn't get enough water. I knew what to do, but I wasn't very nice to myself. And that's I think your body finally said, that's it. You have work to do. It's time to reconcile and it's beautiful. Do you want and to take questions? What a great, from... what a great metaphor to, to have a broken heart and to like, you know, that that's a common metaphor that people, you know, that, that you love with your heart. And um, I don't know, it just gave me a clear direction. No. Yeah. Are there, you... are there questions in the chat? Anybody can answer a question, ask a question, raise a hand. Um, how do I do that? The name of the rowing machine. The name of what the rowing it? machine is um, an elliptical rower from Teeter, T-E-E-T-E-R.com. Power 10 elliptical rower? Yes. Okay. On sale at Teeter, $400 off today. <laughs> Is it? Really? They're usually $800. It's $6.99 today. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, could you talk more about the a heart myocarditis symptoms that you had and explain that in a little bit more detail? Um, well, it was uh, pressure in my heart going into my scapula. And I, I was so short of breath that if I had to take a bite of food and chew it and swallow it, I was gasping. I, I needed to take the food out between chewing and swallowing. I was so short of breath. I was um, uh, hmm. swollen. And, um, and when I had Lyme carditis, the symptoms were different. I, I would um, also get chest pain. I would also go into all sorts of different irregular rhythms like paroxysmal ventricular tachycardia and atrial fib, um, but it would come and go. So um, this didn't go away with a shot of penicillin. I did try it, <laughs> um, but that was not the cause of it this time. That the, the yeah. cause was overwhelming inflammation. The uh, loving kindness program that you listened to, could you tell us the name of that? Um, or do you have multiple? Do you listen to many different types? Um, Key and I listen to different podcasts. One of them is called Secular Buddhism, um, in which Noah Rochetta says you don't have to be, use. Uh, the the teachings to become a Buddhist, you can use the teachings to be a, become a better whatever you are, which is what the Dalai Lama said, that he doesn't want people to all convert to Buddhism. You know, if you're Christian, be Christian. If you're a Muslim, be Muslim. Uh, but use the breath to come into the present moment and um, learn compassion for yourself and others to uh, um, do a better job of whatever you're doing. So uh, Secular Buddhism is um, a, a podcast and there's a podcast by Plum Village, which um, Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist uh, 
Vietnamese Buddhist monk that ha helped to end the Vietnam War. Um, it's called The Way Out Is In, and we love mm -hmm. that one. Um, yeah. Those, I think, are two of my favorites. Could you There's talk head, a little bit? Head, headspace is a is an app you can get on your phone for very little money. I think it was nine dollars a year. It had two thousand different meditations you could use, and you could also get on. And they'll say there's 40 people meditating right now across the globe, but that you knew that you're meditating with 40 people. And um, that was that was nice to know that you weren't alone. Mm -hmm. Can we come back to that? Not necessarily the habit stack, but how, how? what would you suggest for people just starting out to start to create a habit? And I'm just going to preface that with some of the um, science behind habit formation is really creating some dopamine and finding a prompt, something that will help you to remember to do that habit that's easy, it's available, it's right in front of you, something that you will do again and again. So you can't say, I'm going to do like the hardest thing, but to start small. So how would you recommend that, you know, we start that small to, well, to get a little always... bit bigger? I'd always start with, um, you know, a small amount of time meditating because you're breathing anyways. So breathing in, I know I'm breathing in, breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. You just do that twice. You could do it like this, cover up one nostril, breathe it in and out. Just do it with me. We'll do it three times. How many felt the muscles in their neck relax doing that? It happens pretty quick. I mean, you can tell my voice is different. I'm more relaxed. Yes. So when I did um, biofeedback, some, some people would shift right into alpha. So to start There's meditation, a um, to, to a habit stack would be to plan what you're going to eat and eat what you planned. So if you don't know what to eat, there's lots of information out there. And I can guarantee you there's not one best thing for everybody, but processed food isn't good for anybody. Like chips, crackers, all that stuff is not good for anybody. And that's pretty clear. That the head of General Mills had a dream he was going to burn in hell for all the lives he's destroyed with all the pro-inflammatory food he's created and he stopped um being a ceo of general mills and um uh is working with uh quick trips you know you walk into quick trip and there's like real food there's apples and carrots and food yeah um oh. people should eat real food <laughs> a start you know meditation and eating real food and plan what you're going to eat and then eat what you planned and then say, gosh, I planned to eat that and that didn't happen. What went wrong? How could I get more support? How could I be, you know, more clear? Because if you wait until you're hungry and there's junk in the cupboard, you're going to eat it. You're going to eat it and then you're going to be inflamed and all of the bacteria that cause disease are going to come up and have a little party. So would you recommend, so sometimes people just don't want to think about meditation, but just that breathing brings your brain waves into alpha. So you have a little bit more ability to listen to your intuition. So maybe before a meal, just to do a quick series of four breaths, do you, would you find that helpful to just center, to trust your guidance and learn how to trust your guidance? Well, I think that is true. I think um, prayer before a meal is... Uh, um been shown that food is more nourishing if you express gratitude you know that so, some people say i can't stand to chop vegetables i can't stand to cook and when i married my husband who lived through four years of starvation he said what you don't have to grow the vegetables you don't have to like wash the dirt off you just have to like go to the refrigerator open it up and chop it what could be easier we have all this produce here in minnesota and he was just like bathed in gratitude having this food so to sit down and say 
thank you for this food that's available to us today. All of us, I think, have ancestors that have gone through bouts of starvation. Um, many people in the world today don't have enough food to eat. So to be bathing in that gratitude, I think that is a great way to start a meal. I love it. I have a question here about a cardiologist, if you may know of a cardiologist that could deal with Lyme myocarditis. Well, that's a good question. I wish there was. Um, I saw Kevin Harris, who was voted one of the Twin Cities top doctors and was also um, an intern when I was a resident. So that was a good connection. And he helped uh, diagnose me. But really the root cause protocol that I have outlined in my, um, in my notes, um, I hesitate to talk about them because Morley Robbins and I don't always see eye to eye. He, that he can get into a rant about something that I don't know, I don't think is totally science-based, but I have seen the root cause protocol save many lives um people that developed uh long covid and had an anemia when we'd give them magnesium their anemia would go away like what is that about it's 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 really amazing um magnesium when i was taking my boards in hol holistic medicine bill manahan told me if you don't know the question, it's magnesium. If you don't own the answer, it's it's magnesium. <laughs> and so in my handout, I talked about magnesium glycinate can help the nerves and magnesium malate can help the muscles and uh, magnesium threonate helps the brain. And so um, it's more complex than I can get into now. My sister's really good at it. Um, she has uh, worked her way out of complex disease, mostly with the root cause protocol alone. Um, but I take it every day and um, people that have atrial fibrillation and take it, it seems to go away in a couple of weeks. I don't know anything else that makes atrial fibrillation go away. So that's not a cardiologist, but like you could just see what happens with the um, root cause protocol. Dr. Radovsky said that uh, Dr. Thomas Johnson at uh, M Health Cardiology has been more open-minded. Like and she's about, that's in about Lyme disease. Is that true, Dr. Radovsky? Yeah. So I sent people to him, and he's at least a little, little bit more open-minded and willing to. Um, you know, I mean, obviously he's not going to endorse the whole idea of, of, you know, Lyme disease the way that we have it, but he's willing to look at the possibility that um, cardiac issues are Lyme related. Would he treat with antibiotics? No. No, I mean, I, no, I think... but I mean, but if somebody has, yeah, no, but, but if somebody goes to him and has pericarditis and they have a positive Lyme test or a positive Bartonella test, I think he might be a little bit more. I mean, I think that the clinicians probably need to talk to him directly to keep the patient from going to him and not getting anything out of the out of the visit, you know, and kind of explain here's what's going on um, or just send your patient to a Lyme literate doctor, unfortunately. That's what I always did. Like there wasn't anybody that knew more about Lyme than I knew. So like I just treated them. I mean, I sent people to cardiologists initially because like that's what I did. That's what I did in my training. And they would be shamed and blamed. And I mean, like who needs any of that? Like you need to feel when your heart's yeah. hurting. We know doctors that have died of Lyme in their heart you know, it, it, it's a, it's a bad thing and you want to like, take it seriously. But I think any yeah. of the, no, I, I just meant that, yeah, no, I, I just meant that if you had a cardiac issue that you needed support from a cardiologist from, he's the one that's, you know, the least likely to shame patients in my experience. Good. Sorry, I'm, I'm in my office. I'm in the process of leaving. That's why everything is so dark. I'm glad you're here. Lori. Instead, that we're talking about who can less, who would be less shameful towards somebody. 
<laughs> Britt, you had sent us some questions that people had sent us. Um, you don't have those up on your screen, do you? Uh, I can look in my sent mail. Hold on. Um, I think it was just one. Well, there was another one came through this morning. And it was, what are your thoughts about vaccines, especially COVID after you've had it? Do you feel that boosters are necessary? What about shingles, pneumonia, flu? And then, well, I'll ask them one at a time. Yeah, go ahead. The vaccines are a complex um, issue. And I would say I am not against vaccinations. I certainly think polio and um, tetanus vaccines are strongly science-based. To the best of my knowledge, in my most recent search a month ago, nobody has ever done a double-blind placebo-controlled trial on a COVID vaccine. Um, so, like, vaccines were brought forward thinking they might work. They were introduced in the spring when COVID was naturally falling and it made it look like they did work because most of the people that were gonna die of COVID had already died and um, COVID is serious. I've had it like, I think five times myself and one time I was sick for three months. So I, I, I don't think COVID's minor, but um, I heard the head of the NIH saying that they didn't think they were gonna take the new vaccine because there wasn't evidence that it could work against new strains. We're always behind in the COVID vaccines because the, the virus changes so fast. So I think uh, if you have natural immunity um, and you get it once or twice a year, like you get a cold, I think that is the best you can do. Um, Gemmo, uh, Lauren Hubelay has a whole list of things that we do uh, with Gemmo. And in my handout, I, I talk about black poplar, which has been found to decrease viral uh, spread cell to cell, not on COVID, but in other, in other viruses, black poplar can help uh, decrease um, viral spread. Um, oak and black currant decrease inflammation that COVID needs to reproduce. Um, COVID does lots of things. So um, if you have like bronchospasm, <sighs> lithy helps bronchospasm, wheezing, wheezing. Um, uh, the, the, there's two chestnuts. One is a uh, sweet chestnut and one is horse chestnut. If you have lung issues, severe lung issues, you would take sweet chestnut and horse chestnut along with black walnut. Um, that, that it's pretty well outlined on laurenhubelay.com's website, what to do for viruses. And um, there's a list of practitioners to consult. Um, Megan is very good to consult if you have COVID and don't know what to do. Um, uh, a young man I assisted, people were called to the hospital 29 times that he was going to die, and he didn't, and he's still alive three years later. Um, gemotherapy and root cause protocol were the two things I added that restored his health. Well, I personally had some pretty profound reactions to just a little gemotherapy, so I'm uh, sold. I'd like to explore that more. So, so um, do I recommend or uh, for or against COVID vaccine? No, I don't recommend for or against, but I am not getting the new vaccine myself. I don't know if any other physicians want to weigh in on vaccines. Probably not. We all want to dodge it. Other questions? Yeah, that person that wrote to me this morning, their second question was, what do you, how do you feel about expired supplements and prescriptions? Hmm. Um, 
Well, there's certain things like doxycycline that can kill you if it's out of date. So don't take old doxycycline. Um, but there's other things that have something called best if used by dates that are certainly not a hard stop. That um, if it says best if used by December of 2022, I might use it for a year after that. Probably not two years. Um, uh, if it was a prescription drug, I would call the pharmacist and ask, what's the problem if I use this after the date? Is it just less potent? So if you, if you take it and your blood pressure is still controlled or your infections are still controlled, uh, you know, might, you have to ask the pharmacist, am I doing any harm if this is out of date? And that would be something a pharmacist would, would be able to answer. Supplements. I feel really good about using old tinctures. I, I don't think tinctures, I, I have some old uh, Cowden tinctures that I'd pull out and use if I needed them. They're like six years beyond, but what are they going to do? They're in a tincture. <laughs> I think Gemos probably would be similar. Don't homeopathic remedies last for ages? Also, yes, I have some from when I was in college <laughs> that are still <laughs> potent. <laughs> that was a few years ago. ago. <laughs> I don't know what happens to them, but I, I, I percuss them. I, I just go like that to just activate them. So any other questions about Lyme, Lyme in general? Um, you know, last year we brought up the question of could Lyme be sexually transmitted? And that is in partnership, uh, often um, an important question. And the first ILADS, International Lyme Associated Disease Society meeting I went to, um, I happened to be seated, seated with um, three couples. And I asked the question if Lyme could be sexually transmitted. And, and the first person said to me, well, you know, with Lyme, you don't have much of a sexual drive anymore. So she would have sex maybe three, four times a year. And every time she would get Lyme symptoms after having sex. And finally, they tested her husband, who was an airline pilot, and he was positive and they treated him and she quit getting sick. And so then the next woman said, well, isn't that interesting? I got the same story. And then the third one was a guy, he was a college professor whose wife had Lyme disease. And it's harder to get um, from a, a woman to a man than a man to a woman. Um, but he said that he would get sick after three or four times of having intercourse and had her checked and she was asymptomatic and she got treated and he quit getting sick. So that was just like fate, what put me at a table with three couples that were passing it uh, from person to person. So many people in my practice used condoms um, or uh, took antibiotics before intercourse to decrease uh, transsexual um, communication of, of Bartonella and um, Borrelia or Lyme. Uh, what about uh, lesbian uh, intercourse or sexual activities? Um, I believe if there's no breaking down of uh, the, the mucosa, like if there's no blood, um, I, I don't think there's gonna be an exchange. I, I don't think, um, I haven't heard that story, um, uh, lesbian couples, but I have heard of uh, uh, homosexual men passing it from partner to partner. I think the penetration is the thing. Dr. Radovsky, did there was two things that you made a comment. Do you mind sharing? Oh, sure. Um, so I do have one case of a lesbian couple where, um, 
it seems as though one partner infected the other just from oral genital contact. I, I totally agree. The more that the mucosa is broken down, so with anal sex, you get like little micro tears in the anus. Um, and even in vaginal sex, you probably do too. And so oral genital contact, you wouldn't think so much, but if, if I had one patient who was sick, I would definitely test the, the female partner. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say, I'm sorry, I'm running around my office trying to get ready to leave. Um, I actually do recommend the COVID vaccine. Um, I think it's very much a benefit risk ratio, but I have heard of at least a couple of cases of people getting COVID three weeks after their COVID vaccine, the, the new one. So I don't know whether it's that this one is less effective or it's more virulent, but basically I tell people, don't rely on the vaccine to keep you healthy. You know, use a mask if you're in, in any public place and you're really, really trying to avoid transmitting it to anybody. So I don't know, Dr. Verkota, you think of those things. Um, and also the microbiome and your uh, your health. Uh... Yeah, I, that's why I said I'm not telling anyone to take it or not to take the vaccine, but I don't think there's evidence that it's effective. Would you imagine that really making sure that your diet, your extra, you know, all four pillars of your life being in balance is probably one of the best things you can do as uh, protective? Yeah, definitely. Against anything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I don't know that you can totally, um, you know, count on that. I mean, Chris Foley of Blessed Memory was in optimal health and died of COVID. And so I don't think that you can necessarily assume that you're going to be um, immune from it just because you have a healthy lifestyle. Sadly so. <laughs> That is true. That's um, like no one of these things is 100%. Um, but we make decisions every day with gut feelings, like who we marry, what we do for a career, where we live in the world. We decide those with gut feelings. So when we learn to tune into what do I really believe is true, what's really really true and what should I do and then we do what we think we should do in our heart of hearts um I, I think that is the best advice that we can have that a lot of us are seeking advice from others but most of the advice that's true teaches us to go inwards Joanne Campbell Rice who's one of the bright line eating teachers said every symptom you have is your body trying to tell you something it's trying to give you a message and you have to sit with that message to learn what to do next. Yeah. You know, you are, you tune in and you can really hear what your, your inner voice is telling you. And I know that many people are just learning how to discern, you know, is that voice because I want that or I don't want that? How would you recommend people learn how to really discern what is a, a truth coming from within versus other? Well, uh, Maureen and I used to do uh, energy testing where you take your middle fingers and thumbs and you make O's and you cross them. And then you pull on it and say, this is a yes. And a yes will hold strong. And you say, this is a no. And it'll kind of slip. This is a yes. This is a no. This is a yes. This is a no. And then you take a little plastic tube of sugar and put it in your armpit and say, this is good for me. And almost everybody's going to get a no. Mm -hmm. And then you take a little glass vial of water and put it under your arm. And uh, this is good for me water and glass is good for everybody okay so you learn that your body holds strong with the truth and it goes false with a lie the truth is power truth is power across the world and it's when we lie to ourselves that we like go astray um once you learn that your body is telling you the truth 
then you can start to follow those truths. Like you don't always want to. I don't want to give up dairy. I really like dairy. <laughs> I don't want to give up nightshades, tomatoes, <laughs> potatoes, eggplant, peppers. Oh my God, I love those. But um, like, that's what my body said was good for me. It stood strong with the truth. We, we you know, did that for, we, we just happened to sit next to people that had been vegetable farmers all their life that had just found like giving up nightshades, made their arthritis go away. And like, then like we met like three people in a row and I thought, all right, we'll try it. We, then we gave it up for a month and it was like so obvious. Like we like, my husband's from Cambodia. We like hot peppers. Like we like hot mm. sauce. We can't have hot sauce. Oh, well. Bad. Oh, well. I really like being able to move <laughs> pain-free. I really like that. So more what, than hot sauce. <laughs> so, so when you did, so the more you did this, the more you could understand that, yeah, I trust what I'm hearing. And and my sense is that pretty soon you can start feeling that inside your body once you've tested yourself. That is true. You got off of peppers. That was true. So you know, you can trust that when you do a muscle test, it is in fact the truth. And I think that some people can actually feel that in their bodies when they ask a question, they're out and about and they check in. There's a felt sense that you learn over time once you start trusting that message. Yeah. And often when I say this, people say, well, what do you do if your body's strong with the sugar and weak with the water? I say, then you're <laughs> switched. There's something, there's something called switched and you take a drink of cold water and then you try it again and then it should straighten out. And it almost always does. Um, so we true. did this in my office for many years, you know, five or six times a day, we would do it with patients. And um, uh, like I stopped sending people home with supplements that they couldn't take for the most part. Our, our returns or dissatisfaction went down 80% when we energy tested people. Wow, that's great. Not 100% because I'm not like perfect at it, but like a lot. Yeah, that's great. Maureen, do you have anything that you want to say? There is a question here about cystus in canis for COVID prevention. What's your opinion about that? Do you know this? I don't know that. Isabel? Cystus sticks. Is that a remedy? I don't. Where's um? Sticks, I don't know if that's your name. Could you yeah. elaborate? My name is Sticks, but my real name is Diane. Um, I learned it from, um, well, I guess I could say Dr. Klinghardt. It's okay to say that. Yeah. He he gets it from an island in Sicily. He, I, um, it grows in the desert, so it's really powerful. It has red poppies. And he did experiments um really on dogs who got Lyme from the Black Forest in Russia, or or was it Germany? Um, and he said, if you only do one thing, do cystus and canis. So I is, got it, my, is it a homeopathic remedy or is it a herbal tincture? What is it? It's an herbal tincture. Um, okay. it's, it's from the plant. It's okay. so real. It lasts forever. <laughs> I've had it for several years. And then he had the idea of for COVID prevention to gargle with it, but to also include propolis. And I don't have propolis, but I I brush my teeth with it. I, and I can tell it really cleans your mouth really good. And if I think I've been exposed, I gargle with it. I wash, I keep my okay. mouth. Okay. Okay. Um, Diane, we need to move on to another question here. Okay. Um, do we have anything else up? Could I... Um... I think the uh, on the email for the Zoom, that's where the handout is. Is that correct? Great. On the email that came out on Wednesday. We already got the attachment. Is that what you're saying? Yes. It came with the invitation that came on Wednesday. Oh, I missed that. My, uh, okay. the, the, my attachment was in. I mean, it wasn't an attachment. It was just like 
after the invitation to join was my notes because um and in those notes there's a lot of resources that for people that are just getting started in Lyme uh the Canadian Lyme Association um uh some of the some of the uh the Burriscano guidelines on antibiotics, diagnosis and treatment. Um, that are somewhat dated, but not that much. And then um, all of the resources I talked about today. Um, I did hear uh, from one of my friends about essential oils and I don't have anybody talking about essential oils, um, but there's a person by the name of Hillary Thing, T-H-I-N-G who is selling some um, essential oil preparations that are consistent with the teaching of Greg Lee, who um, teaches people how to use essential oils. And there's certain ones that are used um, in um, Bartonella and Borrelia. Um, I don't have any experience with it yet. Anybody else here have any experience with using essential oils or um, Hillary Things uh, combination of essential oils? She puts them in a in a microsomal blend where you take an ultrasound and it and it makes it so that it gets inside the cells easier. It's just tiny, tiny amounts. I have no experience with that. Okay. Well, I had quite a few patients come through my office that did something called raindrop therapy where they would put the essential oils over the back and um, they got quite a bit of improvement with that. So um, I think there's uh, science evolving, but I, I don't know how far it is yet. I've had reports that people in the International Lyme Associated Disease ILADS group are are finding some success with Hillary Things um, uh, supplements. I've heard they're very strong and don't start off at the full dose. She says to start with a teaspoon twice a day and work your way up to um, two tablespoons twice a day, I think, uh, which would make it about $108 for every 10 days. And then you have to use it with herbs. And yeah, it was like, it seemed like a lot of money, but if I was really sick, I would I would explore it. I used to do the raindrop technique on my clients when I worked in North Carolina. We were a lot more holistically oriented there. And people could get really sick. I didn't really know the full extent of what could happen. This was back in the 90s. But it's they apparently all the viruses hang out on the spinal cord region and you pretty much smell like a pizza you're using basil oregano um lots of different uh odd things that you would never think of but it was pretty powerful for detoxing i haven't right. used it in a long and, time and so sort of so the essential oils are now put into another base and then they're um an ultrasound is taken to them so that they're um, broken down in very small sizes that get in cells. And then you take just tiny amounts, tiny amounts. So you don't start off with the full dose. Like if a teaspoon is what she says to start off with, start off with a quarter teaspoon once a day, once every other day. If you herx from that, do it once a week. You know, do it like we've done everything else. Start at little doses and work your way up. And, um, Work with your practitioner on it. I think that's all we've got for this week, Anna. And I want to just thank everybody for coming with your time and attention. It was great to see you here. And thank you for sharing your story and your your journey and your tips. It's a really beautiful, uh, I can't wait to dive in, actually. Yeah, so next week we're going to learn about internal family systems with Jane Rosen. And I think um, I think that'll be a lot of fun. She's going to give us some practical um, experiences in it. Hi, Joan. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Thanks for and being here. And I've got this is this is recorded and that will be available. And I and you'll you'll get an alert about that.
All right. Thanks. Bye bye now. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.